What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. I want to talk about a player who has gone in one year from being a pariah of the NBA, of the league, to being on the verge, just two games away from winning his second NBA championship in his career. And if the t present trends continue as far as how this series is going, and this series is far from over, but if his performance continues at anything close to the rate that it's going right now, Drew Holiday, ladies and gentlemen, is on the verge of becoming a Hall of Famer. That may sound outrageous. It may sound outlandish until you start looking at what he has accomplished and what he would accomplish if winning the championship. If he wins another championship, his resume will be a two-time NBA champion, a two-time NBA All-Star, three times NBA All-Defensive First Team, two, uh, three times NBA All-Defensive Second Team, so that's six All-Defensive Selections, six. He won the NBA Sportsmanship Award back in 2021. If you include college, back in 2009, he was on the Pac-10 All-Freshman Team. In 2008, he was the Gatorade National Player of the Year. In 2008, First Team Parade All-American. 2007, Third Team Parade All-American. He was a McDonald's All-American in 2008. And California Mr. Basketball back in 2008. And he won the Olympic uh, gold medal in Tokyo back in 2020. Now, let's look at another layer of this. He was the missing component to what ultimately led Giannis and Milwaukee Bucks to a championship. Because remember, their point guard was Eric Bledsoe, who, while a solid player, was not the key uh, ingredient to a championship team. When they acquired Drew Holiday, his first year, they won a championship. While being a maligned player, because of the performance of Drew, of, uh, that Drew Holiday had as far as guarding Jimmy Butler in last year's playoffs, the Milwaukee Bucks traded him. In his first year with Boston, he helps to lead Boston to the NBA Finals and now on the verge of winning what would be their record 18th NBA championship. Not only that, but he's holding the supposedly most skilled player in NBA history to 14 points per game in the finals on 35% shooting and has yet to hit, hit a three-pointer. And as a matter of fact, he's actually outscoring Kyrie Irving. He's outplaying Kyrie Irving in this series. Now, of course, this series is not over and that probably won't hold. But so far in this series, Drew Holiday is averaging 19 points, 9.5 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, on 65% shooting from the floor, and 44% from the three-point range. And he has yet to miss from the foul line, although he's only had four attempts. He's outplaying the, the most skilled player, they say, in the history of the NBA. And shutting him down. 
or helping to shut him down because it hasn't just been him, but primarily Drew Holiday. So he's proven to be a difference maker wherever he goes. And even if I remember correctly, uh, in that Olympic Games, he helped to spark that 2020 Olympic team when he joined them to the gold medal. I think they, the turnaround happened when he joined that 2020 Olympic team in, in Tokyo. He's the spark to help. So he's proven to be a spark plug wherever he goes. Now, some of you might say, well, I mean, you know, the numbers. I don't know about the numbers, the, the numbers, the numbers. Well, he scored over 15,000 points in his career. He's grabbed over 4,000 rebounds. He's dished out over 6,000 assists. He's closed in on 1,500 steals. He has over 500 career blocks. For his career, he's 46% from the floor, a guy who's supposedly not a scorer. He's 37% from downtown. He's a great foul shooter, 78% for his career. Um, He's been an upgrade for Marcus Smart, who was the reigning defensive player of the year winner. So he's he's been able to fill in for Marcus Smart, plus give you offense. Supposedly something that he's incapable of doing, which I never understood why people thought that he was on the downside anyway, because just last year, he dropped 51 points on the Pacers, a team that eliminated the Bucks this year. So I say to you, to me, he's a Hall of Famer. And, you know, I had someone, a subscriber, bring this to my attention, and I thought about it. And I said, you know what? Yeah. And you know why he's a Hall of Famer? Because as I said before, and this is my, you know, and and this is just my ace card move. If Draymond Green is getting into the Hall of Fame, then that opened up a whole can of worms. Because if Draymond Green is able to get into the Hall of Fame, then we got to look at all these guys. Because he's not better than Drew Holiday. He's not a more accomplished player. Other than the fact that he's he has two more rings, other than that, he's not better. To, he's not better. He's not more impactful than Drew Holiday. Look at the Bucks without Drew Holiday. They're not intimidating. Uh, they, they they don't. They're having problems stopping players in the backcourt. Players are having career highs on that backcourt all day, every day. Tyrese Halliburton putting up 20, 26 point triple doubles against Dame, or as Ticket called him, Lame Dollar. This year, spoken, man, Drew Holiday is the guy that they've been missing. You know, when I saw that Boston signed Drew Holiday, I really, really felt like Boston took a big step to winning the champion. Because when they acquired Dame Dollar, I was hoping that they would trade Chris Middleton, Milwaukee, not Drew, uh, not, uh, Drew Holiday. I hope, I was hoping they would, they would trade Chris Middleton. And look, there are guys in the Hall of Fame that put up numbers and all that, right? Yeah. But Reggie Miller hasn't won anything, right? Camilo Anthony's never won anything. Camilo Anthony's never been to a finals. And this video might be apropos because according to the reports I've heard, Drew Holiday doesn't plan on playing too much longer. He's not going to be, unless he changes his mind, he's not going to be one of these guys that's going to play 15, 18, you know, 19 years. I think he's 32-ish, maybe. Uh, I don't think he's going to play deep into his 30s. Now, it would help his numbers because, you know, I think if he plays another year, he's probably going to reach 16, uh, 17,000 career points. And it would help his cause if he can accumulate 
quote unquote great statistical numbers, but if you look at his numbers, like I said, over fifteen thousand points, over four thousand rebounds, over six thousand assists, or closing on fifteen hundred steals, five hundred career blocks, the great shooting numbers. Yeah. Uh Drew Holiday has proven to be a very effective performer. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's a guy, if you look at some of the playoff runs that he's had, uh, he has upped his performances in the playoffs. So his career in the playoffs, 16.8 points, 5.4 rebounds, 6.4 assists, 1.5 steals, 43% shooting from the floor, 34% from downtown, eight, nearly 80% from the line. And since uh, 2017, the postseason, since 2017, 17.6 points, 5.9 rebounds, 6.9 assists, 1.4 steals. And um, he's had some big moments uh, playing for different teams. For the Bucks, he, he had some big key defensive stops, down the stretch, steals, game-winning steals, game-winning plays, offensively and defensively. So yeah, uh, that it depends on whether it's a deep class or whether it's a weak class. But I think that he's going to be either a first ballot or second ballot Hall of Famer. He should be because if you're going to put him in the Hall, I mean, if you're going to put Draymond Green, shoot, excuse me, in the Hall of Fame, then Drew Holiday deserves to be looked at, and then other players, other players, man. I'm gonna do videos on some uh, some of these other old school dudes who. Because of the way that they induct people now, the lowered bar, yeah. Some of these guys need to be getting in. Anyway, tell me what you guys think.